This video is an update to one of my previous videos about how to use your Casio graphical calculator. It's a couple of years old, I was on a much older model. We're now up to the FX CG50, so I thought I'd post an update to uh, that video. I'm gonna show you how to use this calculator and everything that I'm showing you here, you can do with any of the Casio graphical calculators, whether it's uh, an older model, uh, the CG20 or the 9860 or something like that. Um, but the, the CG50 is the current highest spec uh, calculator that we have and it's certainly a little bit prettier in terms of the way that it presents things from previous calculators. So very simply we turn it on with this button just here and it's also the off button. You'll see just above the button it says in yellow off. And the way we access each of these yellow functions, you can see them above quite a lot of the buttons, is by pressing shift and then off and it will turn off by itself. Okay, so when we open it, this is our standard calculations uh, screen. This is where we can do anything that we want to do, to do any of those sort of normal calculations. Um, we notice, of course, that this is the equals button. There is no equals on here. EXE for execute is what we're going to be pressing each time. So that's how we're doing those calculations. We also notice there's a few other things which I'll talk about in a bit more detail uh, on the screen. We've got a couple of different options appearing at the bottom here. We've got our uh, battery status. It's only a very rough guide, but it will show you how your batteries are doing. And we've got some other information up here, which is, which is to do with which settings and mode you've got your calculator put in. Notice that it does go dark after a little while when you, if you're leaving it inactive. Pressing any button will wake it again. If I go into the menu and scroll all the way down using this directional pad here, we can go down, I've lost it now, where's it gone? Uh, system settings is moving around, pressing execute. We can go in there and we can see all of the display settings and power properties and things by pressing the corresponding F keys, which are these ones across the top here. So F1 will be able to change the amount of light that we have. And F2 will be able to say how long before it turns the power off. So you can change those settings uh, however you want by simply moving the directional buttons along and choosing do we want auto power off after 10 minutes pressing this button, 60 minutes pressing that button and so on. Whenever you see options running along the bottom of the screen pressing these F keys will be how you select which one you want. I'm going to come out there, I'm going to press exit, I'm going to press menu and I want to go back up to my um, uh, calculations mode. Now I can move around by this and I can scroll back all the way down to the bottom. This sort of continually scrolls. Or you notice there are little numbers appearing in each of those and you can simply press the one that you want. So I want the run mode which has a 1 by it. I press a 1. There we go. And we're back to our calculations mode. Okay, so when we're doing our calculations we notice that we've got the calculation up here and of course what we can do is we can do any sort of um, things, oh, I did the same one twice. Anyway, we can do the same thing, uh, we, we can do any sort of calculations that we want and it's just gonna keep on adding lines to it. And of course, as we keep going, uh, it's going to just keep adding lines on. We can go back and see previous ones by simply using our up arrow and you can see it cycling along there. And then coming back down again, we can get back to wherever we want it to be. So we can see that and you can actually edit those previous calculations to use the format of them again, which can be quite useful. Now I've got lots of stuff on here. I might decide that I want to delete everything from the screen. There's no need to, but sometimes you might want to to just clear things up. And we notice that we've got delete here. Pressing delete gives us a couple of different options. Delete line, if we just want to delete a specific line, or delete all, which is gonna delete everything from the screen. So pressing that, are you sure you want to? Yes, of course I am, press F1. There you go, everything has gone from that screen. Now to talk about a couple of the other buttons that are going to be very useful when you're doing your calculations, this button here, looks a little bit like a hat, is your power button. So if I want to do something like 2 to the power of 3, press execute, that's how we do it. Now we do have to be a little bit careful about how we do this stuff, because if I want something like uh, 2 to the power 3 plus 5, and I type that, oop, press the wrong button, press delete, uh, 2 to the power of 3 plus 5, we notice that what it's doing, of course, is it's taking 2 to the power of 3 plus 5, so 2 to the 8. If we want 2 to the 3 plus 5, we're going to do 2 to the power 3. Notice that the cursor is quite small and appearing at the top. I'm going to press right, the cursor becomes bigger, and now we're doing 2 to the 3 plus 5. We can work with fractions as well. This is our fraction button. 
pressing that one, it's going to create a standard fraction, so we can do whatever we might want there. Two sevenths, there's our fraction. And notice that it leaves it as a fraction. Now we might want to know what the decimal version of that is. Pressing this button here, S to D, which I think stands for thirds to decimal, I'm not sure. Um, pressing that allows us to convert between the two formats that we want, so um, a fraction and a decimal. And of course, we might want to do some mixed number, so we notice above this button we've got the three boxes appearing. So we're going to press Shift and that, and it now sets something up in terms of it being a mixed number. So 4 and 5 thirteenths, maybe. There we go. It automatically converts it to a mixed, sorry, to a top-heavy fraction. And again, we can turn it into a decimal. That's absolutely fine. But if we've done some calculation that leads to a top-heavy fraction and we want to convert it into a mixed number, if we look above this button, we see A and B over C convert to D over C. So pressing Shift on that one, and it will convert between those two. And of course, you can go through those as much as you might want to. <clears throat> Other things above the power button, we've got our uh, nth root, although it's got an x, so the xth root. So if we press that button, we get to that stage, and maybe we want the third root of 5 or something like that, and it will work it out for us. Other things you need to know about, of course, are pi, which is appearing down here, pressing Shift Pi. That will appear there. Rather helpfully, it just displays it as pi. And of course, we can find out pi if we want to, to do that one. Notice that this is the times 10 to the power of button. So of course, if you want to write something in standard form, we can do that. But it displays it as an e rather than times 10 to the power of. It's saying 2.3 time, uh, 2 uh, times 10 with an exponent of 14. This is just the format that the calculator writes it in. Now, another useful button is this one here, this little arrow. This is where we can store things into the memory. So maybe I've done some sort of a simple calculation, whatever it might be. There we go. I want this answer. I'm going to store it into the memory. Now, the way the memory works is the little red or pink letters that appear above all of the buttons are where we store them. So I'm going to go alpha A, storing it into A. I can now go and do a whole bunch of other calculations, whatever it might be that I want to do. And eventually, of course, my work is going to um, move off the top of the uh, screen. If I want to use A again, it's still stored in there. That's absolutely fine. There it is. And I can use this within calculations. So I can do 23 times A plus 5 divided by A or anything that I want to do. And there's our calculation. So it's very useful for that. And we can keep storing these things into as many different memories as we want to. Store that one into B. That's fine. Now, you never need to clear these memories. If I want to store something else into the place of A, I simply store it into A. And now that is the value of A. So you don't ever need to clear these things. <clears throat> so I've already used delete a couple of times, but just to show you, delete really is a backspace. So that's, that's quite nice and straightforward. But of course, we can use the arrows to move around to delete specific parts. So that's quite a useful little function. Of course, we've got our standard things, logarithms, natural log, sine, cos, tan. And notice that above them, we've got the uh, e to the power of x, inverse, sine, and so on. So each of those are there. Now, if I'm doing something like sine of 60, we notice that it will present it as a fraction insert form. Again, we can convert if we really want to. But it's nice that it is presenting it to us in this format that's very, very helpful for us. Now this is of course working in degrees and we can tell that from looking at the top, it tells us that we are working in degrees mode. And this is um, a new feature which is uh, not in many of the older models. If I wanted to work in radians instead, what I need to do is I need to go into the setup. And we see just above the menu button, we have setup. So pressing shift, setup, we can now move with our arrows through a whole bunch of different settings that we might want to change. Of course, the one that we want is degrees, and I'm going to specify that it's going to be in radians. Press exit, and we notice that up here now it has changed to radians mode. Now, of course, we can do whatever we might want to do in terms of radians. We've seen the menu navigation, and a lot of these other options are um, explained in some of my other videos, especially how to draw different types of graphs, how to use different statistics modes, and so on. I've also included some on uh, some of the other parts down here. This is very useful if you're studying chemistry. Basically, you've got the um, full periodic table in there and various bits of functionality in there. You can also convert between different units. So there's some very useful stuff that the calculator can do. So please see some of my other videos for that. 
Now one other area where things get stored or um, where options get stored for you is in options. So let's say we want to do something like five factorial. So we've pressed options, we've got a whole bunch of different things appearing here. The one that we want actually isn't there. So this little diagram here is showing us that there are more options available to us if we press F6. So I press F6 and the one that we want for factorial is actually in probability. So here is factorial. So I now type in something like 5 factorial and it will work that out. You'll also notice that there's NPR and NCR. So if you're using any of those, maybe you want something like 5P3, it'll calculate those, or 10C4, that's absolutely fine. RAND is where it'll calculate, or, or rather produce, random numbers for you. And there's a whole other video on my channel which will show you how to do those. So that's very useful. If I don't want these things anymore, simply pressing exit will allow me to get out of that and keeping on pressing it will take me right back to the very start. Another option that you might want is complex numbers. So we can do things like 2 plus 3i and it will understand exactly what's going on there and we can find the argument of say the previous answer which is quite useful. So this function here in yellow above the negative symbol answer this will always use the previous answer. Okay so Maybe we're doing something like 2 plus 3. Let's do the previous answer times 2. And of course we get 10. Now if I press execute again, what it will do is it will follow the same command again. So answer times 2. So it will take that answer and multiply it by 2. And of course keeping on pressing, we'll just keep on multiplying that by 2 each time. Another option that you might want is hyperbolics. So if we go and find that one, hyperbolics, and we've got shine, cosh, and tan, of course, and we can do something like shine or four, and notice that it gives us it in a decimal format. It doesn't give it in the e to the x format or anything like that, and no amount of pressing that button will allow it to be shown in any other format. So that gives you a very quick overview of what the calculator can do, or rather how you use it, it does a heck of a lot more than I'm going to be showing in this video. So I would recommend, as I've said, looking at some of the other videos which are on an older model of calculator, but this still does exactly the same things in pretty much exactly the same way. This is a, certainly a lot prettier when it comes to things like drawing graphs, where maybe we can have all of these different colours and things going on. So it, it's, it's definitely um, a much prettier display. But that shows you how to do it. So good luck with using your Casio graphical calculator.